welcome back students now let us start the new topic which is inflorescence inflorescence means the manner of arrangement of the flowers the manner in which the flowers are arranged on the shoot or you can say the mode of arrangement of the flowers on the apex basically there are various ways in which flowers are arranged on the main stem so like uh, in your book four ways have been described for first one is at the apex so you might have observed that flowers basically arise at the apex like suppose these are the branches then at the tip of every branch there may be a flower this type of inflorescence is called apex the flowers arise at the apex of the branch at the tip second is that the flowers arise at the axils axils means at the axil of a leaf this is the leaf here there may be the leaves and the flower will arise here okay these are the leaves say the flower will arise at the axil axil of the leaf so this is called axil a x i l and this is called apex when it is at the tips and when it is at the axil of the leaf we call it axil third inflorescence is when the flowers come and lie at the same level at the same level you normally what happens is that the this is another type of inflorescence where the lower branches they become taller and they come at the tip and this is the main branch and the flowers and these also will become taller and all the flowers will come and lie at the same level at the same plane like this this is another type of this is called corium you will study the various names in higher classes but now in your book they have only given some four types and you can also refer and read from your book see growing out from the axils of different leaves and reaching the same level making a cluster so here there will be a cluster okay and the one more type is when the main branch it forms suppose this is the main branch at the tip it forms a sort of uh, receptacle disc shaped structure and now here the flowers will be born and normally we call it uh, centripetal manner centripetal manner means in which the younger flowers grow towards the center and the older flowers are at the periphery at the sides this type of arrangement of flowers is in sunflower sunflower okay so these four types are described in your book this is at the apex of the main stem axils of the leaves then uh, all of them reaching out at the same level making a cluster or the axis is laterally flattened making a disc in sunflower youngest flowers are in the center and oldest at the periphery okay so this is all about inflorescence the next topic is placentation 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 is the manner in which the ovules are arranged or attached to the walls of the ovary see dear students i have explained you that uh, you know that each female reproductive part has a stigma and the style and the ovary and inside the ovary there are chambers there may be one chamber we call it locule this is one locule and if there is one locule there will be only one ovule and this ovule is attached with the type with a soft tissue and that soft tissue is made up of parenchyma cells we call it placenta placenta and if the ovary has two locules two chambers okay we call it bilocular unilocular sometimes in some plants it has three chambers so there are various uh, numbers according to the plants various types of plants it may be bilocular trilocular pentalocular or multilocular okay so the various uh, form according to which the ovules are arranged inside the ovary this is called 
placentation placentation placenta is present everywhere around and it helps the ovules to attach with the ovary okay the see your book placentation is the manner in which the ovules are arranged or attached to the wall of the ovary fine apart from this there are few more terms which you will read in your book one is tepals tepals or we call it perianth perianth see you have read about that flower has sepals consists of sepals the outermost whorl and it consists of petals the inner whorl second whorl right and you have read that sepals are normally green in color and petals are colorful so in some flowers there is no difference between sepals and petals either the both are green or either the both or both are colorful so when we cannot distinguish between sepals and petals according to the color so we call it tepals or we can say it as perianth if the petals are like sepals if the petals are like sepals means green then we will say sepaloid perianth sepaloid perianth and if the sepals are colorful like petals then we will say petaloid perianth petaloid perianth okay so these two terms you have to study tepals perianth sepaloid perianth and petaloid perianth and next one more term is bract in some plants in some flowers there are uh, at the axils there are some leaf like structures they are not leaves but they are leaf like structures we call them bracts and the flowers arise at the axil of the axil of the bracts okay these bracts may be green like ordinary leaves or they may be colorful as in the case of bougainvillea in bougainvillea the pink or the red or the white leaves which you see and consider it petals but those are not petals next time you see it carefully those are the bracts and the flowers are present inside the bracts for example this one fine and now one more term it is about uh, nectaries flowers have nectar producing glands we call them nectaries these nectaries nectaries secrete nectar what is nectar nectar is a sugary fluid a sugary syrup which is produced by certain cells in the flowers and they are basically present at the base of the pistil in some flowers at the base of the petals or in sometimes at the base of the sepals also okay so their uh, position or location can be asked that where are nectaries located in the plant it is you located in the flowers where at the base of the pistil or petals okay and what is the function they secrete nectar fine and you know that nectar is collected by honey bees by birds the insects they visit and they help in cross pollination in some cases nectaries are very very prominent there is an example of the flower's name is nasturtium it has a very long see this is the nectary very prominent very clear nectary which secretes nectar all right and now the last two terms based upon sexuality in plants this is given in blue box like you have read that flowers are unisexual or bisexual when both androecium and gynoecium are present we call them bisexual flowers and when only one part is present we call them unisexual flowers but these two terms are uh, restricted to the flowers in case of plants based upon these flowers plants are also explained or described as monoecious and dioecious plants monoecious plants are those which have both the flowers male as well as female flowers on the same plant all right like pumpkin cucumber maize etc and dioecious plants are those which have male flowers on one plant means separate plant and female flowers are born on separate plant we call them dioecious example is papaya so my dear students please revise till here and go through all the terms and also find out the answers in the next video i will discuss the answers with you so till then take care of your health and study every day 
सीरियसली ओके गॉड ब्लेस यू थैंक यू वेरी मच